Hey everyone, it's Stellar Steel, and it's time to steal yourself from another one of these interviews on an ongoing series of my channel where I interview just a wide variety of people that I just feel like, for whatever reason, interviewing them just for fun. We're just here really to talk about a wide variety of subjects. I should almost make this a podcast, really. But anyways, though, um, today I have a very special guest here with me today. They're part of the Evolution Squad, whole project thing like that. But why don't you go and introduce yourself? Hey guys, it's Isis Heart or Sweet Tart. Uh, most of you guys know me as Sweet Tart. I'm here today with Steel. It's gonna be yeah. fun. <laughs> Glad to have you here though, because it took a little while for me to get back with the interview stuff. It's been, I think, the last time since I did one of these was like over a year, and it wasn't even like an Evolution Squad member. It was just some YouTuber that was a friend of mine, and I felt like um just felt like they deserved an interview because they did so much work and youtube nowadays is just so punishing i know you're trying to start things out i don't even add a question about that on here about you starting out things but um maybe we'll get into it later on who knows yeah that's just kind of how it goes with the interviews it goes for hours on and almost like a podcast so thing but anyways though um since you brought up your name uh how exactly did you get that whole like isis heart name like where did where did it come from so that's actually an interesting story um when I was younger, my brother had this OC, um, it's kind of like cringe now thinking back to it, but basically his was fire-based and mine was ice-based. Um, originally the name I would use was Isis Fox, it was a pun, like Ice Fox, and then I also really loved Egyptian mythology, so like, that was like, super fun to me and super cool. Um, as I got older, though, I started getting into other things. Um, I remember Kingdom Hearts releasing, and I started doing, like, RP stuff and all that. And, um, I was like, well, I really like her name to be more related to Kingdom Hearts. So I changed her name to Heart, and it just kind of stuck, and that's just been my username and stuff for a long time. Um, recently, though, I've been trying to switch over to Sweetheart. Because um, my friend made me this really cute persona, and it reminded me, the color scheme and everything, reminded me of Sweet Tarts Candy. So I was like, oh, well, that's, that'd be a really cute username. <laughs> so I've been trying to use Sweet Tart a lot more now, as opposed to Isis Heart. Either one is fine, though. Wow, I didn't know that. I never thought that, like, it really, when you think about it, though, like, your original name, Isis Heart, boils down from like kingdom hearts egyptian mythology with i don't even know when i was when, it reminds me of like when i was recording that persona episode for persona 5 i <laughs> named an episode after you because yeah. i thought it was funny because yeah, i found a persona that was funny. isis yeah <laughs> that's yeah, really where I, that all I, comes I, from really um and then oh. sweet tart as well i know what you're saying about your oc um well, i know you have a newer one yes yes she's she's the bunny that you see on my youtube channel picture that's, uh, tart. Yeah, I, I gotta say, though, I love the concept of candy, because I think we all have a natural craving, unless you have some kind of, like, allergy or something to it, to, like, to just, to, yeah. just sugar in general. Yeah, sweet tarts are actually, like, one of my favorite candies. Um, I mainly like, like, sour candies, but a lot of the time, like, I don't know, I've had sweet tarts in a long time, but they were so good. <laughs> <laughs> right? I, I used to hate sour and, like, spicy food, but now, like, as you get older, you start to change, you know, like, yeah, oh, I hate that food when I was younger. Like, it's just icky, as you would say, when you're, like, yeah. a kid, and now you're like, oh, now it's actually really good. I gotta, I, I just have, like, an addiction to it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, thanks for sharing that. I had honestly no clue. That's pretty cool. I've never actually played um, the Kingdom Hearts game before. I, I was thinking getting into it, because I do have a PS4 now, um, and I was it's thinking, like, you fun. know, the new one, Kingdom Hearts 3 and all. It's a lot of fun, honestly. I still have to get the DLC myself, but I already finished the game. Um, I think I have to play through again, though, like, play through the ending part, it, like, the true ending, because I think I did it, like, in an easier mode, and then I was going to play Critical when that came out. But, you know. <laughs> right. I used to be a big fan of Disney stuff when I was younger. I think, really, it kind of changed when I ended up finding a lot of, like, Nintendo, and then you get the addiction to Nintendo yeah. for, like, many years, and then Smash Brothers and Pokemon and all this <laughs> stuff. And then it finally, like, probably around the time when I got into Discord, that's when I became more open with games, like, probably 2017. And I started to play, like, mm -hmm. a wide variety of stuff, but I gotta play one of those games, and it seems like, at this point in my life, I gotta figure, like, what games do I gotta play and what games don't I play? Because there's just so many, there's, like, millions of games now, I believe. Yeah, there's a lot. 
And it's like, it's like, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta find, you find the ones that you really like, and then you'll also find ones that maybe like, oh, this wasn't so much of a hit with me. Right. But, uh, but speaking of games, though, um, goes right into this next topic perfectly is, um, I, it's no secret that I know that you're a big fan of Legend of Zelda and the series. Yes, yes. Um, I guess I want to add an extra question here. I just, I, I couldn't find a good spot for this, really, but, like, wh is The Legend of Zelda, like, your favorite, uh, like, out of any game at all? Like, do you think it's your favorite series? Um, well, if you were to make me choose between any game, I would probably pick a Zelda game, like, 95% of the time. There's, like, maybe one game that you would get, like, over Zelda ever, and it would be Bioshock, but, like... <laughs> It's because I really love, like, that whole, like, steampunk vibe. And, like, like, it's just a lot of fun to me. That kind of stuff. And then, like, but, but like I said, 95% of the time, I'm going to pick Zelda over anything. I need to get back into Zelda for a while. But, uh, anyways, though, uh, what is your favorite Zelda game, then, if that's the case? Um, Majora's Mask. <laughs> Same! I'm, like, that game... Uh, I'll let you talk, because, like, it's great. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's honestly... Uh, my first game was Ocarina of Time, and then I was introduced to Majora's Mask. Um, a few years later, when the Ben Drown uh, <laughs> creepypasta came out... Yeah. Um, it was really, like... I, I can't remember if it was before or after when I found out about it, I remember my brother downloaded an emulator and I wanted to play Ocarina of Time and we found like we found Majora's Mask and we we're like, oh, this is a lot of fun. Checked it out and honestly, I just fell in love with that game. <laughs> it's just got this whole like creepy like vibe to it while also being like really interesting with the story and how the characters go. And for for like Zelda game, I feel like it was just like really good <laughs> yeah exactly like i i remember that game was only created within a year and it's pretty crazy to think that a lot of it's reused assets from ocarina yeah. time and stuff like that but somehow people i hear a lot of the time that's one of their favorite zelda games and mine included just because like yeah, i agree with you, the atmosphere how heroic it is like you're just it's all it feels yeah. like almost like something created from like the fans you could say it's also like kind of different than a regular like normal zelda like storyline because while you're the hero you're also, like, you're in the timeline where, like, your deeds aren't really recognized as being the hero. So you're the hero while not being the hero. And yeah, exactly. I don't know why, but, like, Majora's Mask, it came at an interesting point in my life. Where I just randomly found, um, I always say about this guy's name, Chugga Connery all the time. Uh, yeah. I saw his Let's Play of that in Pikmin 2, and I was like... I never played a Zelda game before. That was my first Zelda game I had experience. Well, I kind of lying because like Super Smash Bros. Brawl had this thing called like Masterpieces. I think it was called mm. or something like that. You could play a demo, a really short demo that took like minutes to load for some reason. And I played the, <laughs> the first game was the first Ze Legend of Zelda. And I don't know what I was doing. I think the first time I played it, I skipped the sword in the cave. And I was like, how come mm. I'm dying and I have no weapon? But then eventually I found the cave by accident. <laughs> I feel that. I think I think I remember what you're talking about. I haven't played Brawl in a long time. Yeah, but I think I remember what you're talking about. Right. I, I think they only had the first Zelda in that, but I think in um, they brought it back in Wii U, which I felt like it just didn't have as much of a purpose, and they got rid of it completely from Ultimate, because like in yeah. Brawl, it, it was like a lot of those games. I felt like that was during a point in time where people were just getting like pretty decent internet where they could start to download things and it was the demos were really nice but i never had internet until probably around when wii u came out but yeah i just <laughs> the zelda series certainly starts off kind of rough but then it and then it goes to like majora's mask definitely i said the n64 games where people say that's one of their favorites yeah yeah but, those, those are a lot of fun yeah exactly i i will say one thing about majora's mask i still got to complete my second playthrough of that game hundred uh, percent. Like I, I, that game is like. Normally, I don't like hundred percent in games. That's one of like I find it annoying yeah. to me, and it just depends like what kind of game it is. But if it's like addicting, like Majora's Mask, I love it. Like I can get through the Water Temple with like I know that place like the back of my hand. I got all the fairies somehow. I don't know how I did. I just went on a family trip. <laughs> Use no guide somehow, and, and I got like I think I'm like ninety percent of the way done with the game. I just need to get I think just a few more collectibles. And then finish Stone Tower Temple, which I'm lost. I don't even know how to complete that temple. I, I get... just 
completed that on my uh, replay through right now. So like that's that's where I'm at. I just completed it, and I'm trying to go back and get the rest of the masks before I do my final like cycle. I might have to redo that entire temple because I think I'm like in the last day, and it's I think I only have like half an hour roughly left of the game, and I'm only like halfway through the temple. Mm -hmm. I don't even know where I'm supposed to go. Probably better if I do redo it because it's been over three years since I touched that second oh. playthrough. Have you um have you flipped the temple yet? I did, but then like after I flipped okay. it, um I don't know where to go. Like there's this one jump that's like these suspended platforms in midair. Yeah. And I don't um, I keep trying to jump and I just end up falling somehow. I recommend I do recommend like if you think you're on that like last half hour, just restart and then like because you flipped the temple already and have light arrows and all that, it'll just you'll just be able to like breeze through it. Well yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, the light arrows easily destroy that. I gotta see yeah. if I have those, then if I do have the light arrows, then... Which I think I... Do you get those after you flip the temple, then? I think you get them, like, right before, because I think that's okay. how you flip the temple. Okay, yeah, if I do have those, then that should be really easy. The only thing is, like, I think the fairies might be <laughs> kind of hard to get. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. But yeah, uh, man, we're just gushing about Majora's Mask, and we're already, like... <laughs> I think we're already like 10 minutes in, yeah, a little more than that, but... It's a good game, you can't blame us! It, it is, really, like, oh man, it's, I, I like the 3DS version, a lot of people will complain about, I've heard some people say, like, the N64 version's better, I do have that, but I played, like, a ported version of it on the GameCube, and it's not good whatsoever, like, it is, like, <laughs> the most low-budget port, and the game crashed. When I was shooting one of those, I think it's called, like, Gwaze, those crow enemies, um, with an arrow, oh, yeah. it just crashed my GameCube, and my screen was just, like, my, like, old CRT was just screeching. I'm like, what the oh, f- no. <laughs> And I, I just lost all my progress, because I, I didn't even save for an hour, and I beat Odawa, I think he was, in, um, oh. the- uh, I don't remember the temple, uh, from the, the first temple you face, but- Yeah. Um, after uh, it crashed, and I was like, uh, it stopped me from playing the game, I wanted to play it around 2014, but then it was like, I heard the remake was coming out for the 3DS, and- I loved that, and people said they don't like the Zora swimming, and because they changed yeah, it. Yeah, it's because like when you get to the Zora area in the N sixty four, and like on, I'm not sure about the GameCube version because I had like, I played like the N sixty four version, but um, when you get to that part, there's something really satisfying about the way you swim, um, and, like it's just a lot of fun to do it. But when you get to the three DS version, and it, it is one of my like negatives about the 3ds version is that um the swimming's just not as satisfying or as fun and like you always have to use zora magic and like you didn't have to before and it's still fun and i still really love the 3ds version because it was like an easier way for me to play like majora's mask on the go but there were things smaller things that like really annoying like the final um temple boss that got really annoying <laughs> i yeah. literally was doing that for like a and a half on in game time and it was i was irritated <laughs> i gotta say the the bosses well i mean the temples in general just majora's mask um, out of all the games also they like, feel super long um there's also like a few other like little details little things you know for the most part it's a lot of fun still and i really do love the 3ds version i know you and ben play that all quite a bit you're racing each other weren't you Yes, we are currently in the middle of a race. He thinks he's winning because he says he has more masks. But I am on uh, the quest for Anju and Cafe, and those are the only masks I'm missing. So, you <laughs> tell me which one you think is winning. <laughs> I think I want to put my money in you, but I never know about Ben. Like, yesterday he just messaged me saying, like, I just beat the Octo Expansion. I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Um... I think that's what I want to say about Majora's Mask, because that game is so big, like, it's probably, I would say, I, I don't want to say, like, Breath of the Wild size, but, like, they did a good job putting a lot of content in there. It still feels like a long Zelda game. Oh, yeah. But, um, I guess let's move on to the next question, because if we, <laughs> we'll just keep talking about how great that game is. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right, but, um, generally, though, what is your favorite game console of choice? Um, well, it depends on, like, what I'm, like, what my mood is a lot of the times i will prefer nintendo's consoles um for the most part yeah if you give me a nintendo console i'll play on it before like a ps4 i don't touch xboxes sorry i don't like them <laughs> never use one myself really personally don't like them like no offense to anybody who uses them i'm sure you like them for the reasons you like them right but i don't like them <laughs> 
Um, for the most part, though, I really love playing on Nintendo's consoles. They're a lot of fun. Games are, like, really engaging. You know, they're just they're fun. I have, like, literally... Well, um, I have so many games for my DS, for my Switch. For, yeah, we have an original N64. We have a GameCube. Um, we have Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, the, an original Game Boy. Nice. Um, so, our family has a lot of Nintendo consoles, and we play a lot of Nintendo games. We also do have a couple PlayStations. Um, forget, my brother has, I think, PlayStation 3, I want to say, and then I have 4. Um... And I play a lot of, like, different games like Kingdom Hearts, Spider-Man, Bioshock, but now Bioshock's gonna be- well, it is on the Switch, so... <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> yes, I love Bioshock. <laughs> I gotta play- Bioshock's interesting game for me. Like, I remember when I was younger, there was this- I forget what it was, but it was, like, this gaming channel, um, for, like, cable, and mm -hmm. I remember it was first being shown off on, um... Uh, that channel. I, I think it that hey, they have an enemy called like the Big Daddy, right? In that game, I think it's called. Yes. Yeah, that's. I, it. I remember that was the like one of my memories I had was like I was like yeah. six years old or something like that. I don't even remember. And I saw that game and it just kind of like oh that looks kind of cool, but it, it freaked me out at the same time because it was like yeah. <laughs> I was pretty young. Yeah, somebody actually introduced that uh, introduced me to it. Um, a friend of mine when Infinite came out. I mean, like, I kind of had an idea about it before, but, like, didn't really care. And then my friend introduced me to Infinite. It was really hype about, like, the whole storyline. And I just kind of, like, fell in love with the game series after that. It's really interesting. I love, like, that whole, that like, game. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's a little, it's a little, uh, scary, though. Or, like, I don't know. It's just, it can be a little scary. Oops, I hit my mic. <laughs> It's, I didn't hear it, so you're good. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, it can be a little scary. Like, every once in a while, even I will get, like, scared by it. Like, it'll jump scare me or something stupid like that. Yeah. But it's still a lot of fun. I mean, I horror games are okay as long as you can fight back in said horror game. I don't like horror games where you're just running away from something. Or you're trying yeah. to stop, you know, like Five Nights at Freddy's. Well, Five Nights at Freddy's is interesting, too. I don't play it myself. Not often. My friend bought it for me because, <coughs> excuse me, he asked for two. And I don't know if he misheard me or something, but he bought me one. Oh. And, um, God, I haven't talked to that guy in a long time. But, like, it was, it was, it was interesting and kind of fun. But, like, I'm more into the lore with that. <laughs> I would say I'm more into the lore, too. When I was, like, early high school days, I was really interested in that game. But then... It's like, it doesn't seem like I'd play, and it was kind of like more of a phase for me. Um, yeah. I, I just like, it's... whenever something new comes out with it, I like to like see what's going on with the lore and story-wise. I've never really played very many myself. But, you know, I just like to keep up with the story. It's fun. I used to keep up with it, but then it just kind of became like too attached to game theory. <laughs> like, it was just kind of all um... game theory stuff then. Yeah, we already talked about our opinions on game theory before. <laughs> I think on stream, right? Yeah, on stream. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't believe that's been like 20 days almost as of us recording this. I, I, said, I said I was going to interview around that time too, but then I just, everything got so caught up and yeah. uh, the stream really burned me out. I should have just done that one stream, to be honest, <laughs> of you. It was like the first one with you. Um, uh, oh yeah, he wasn't here. <laughs> we can't say yes. he was... And there was somebody yeah, else. There. There was a, yeah, there was a few people there. And after I did that, I was felt pretty burned out. But then I did the next one, the next one. I'm like, oh, yeah, this I wasn't a good to, idea. I wanted to rejoin you for a couple streams, but I didn't end up doing it. And I kind of feel bad because, like, I just, I felt like it would have been fun. But, eh, you I'm know. I'm glad you were there. You were, yeah, you were, the last time you were there, it was, like, over a year ago on my channel. And that was when I had really bad internet. It was kind of, like, awkward because I invited a bunch of other people on, some close friends, internet friends. Then it was, like chaos i would say but, yeah and then like at that point i was like still not completely used to like talking with you yet so it was kind of like uh you know that was a bad idea on my part i'll say but i, I tend to be an, an outgoing guy too much you could say now like come on let's do this or like you know fine. But, i mean honestly it, it got me to like be a little more comfortable talking on a mic and stuff 
Well, that's good. Glad I could at least accomplish that. <laughs> but, um, man, we went from talking about Bioshock to then talking about streaming. <laughs> no. Yes. This is what happens with us. We just kind of have, like, this flow of conversation. You'll find that happens with me a lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It happens it's, with me a lot, too. Yeah. If you talk to me about one thing, it'll just go off into a tangent, and then we'll just keep going. <laughs> right. All right, well... Uh, we'll get back to video games then, but do you have a memory from a game that you cherish the most or a very more like memorable experience from a game? Um, I'm not 100% sure. Like, I was thinking about this one a lot. This is the one that was stumping me because I don't really remember like having like an exact moment of like a game, but I remember seeing, I remember game moment that really like changed my life was the first time I saw that first, like, commercial for Kingdom Hearts. That just changed my life. It was a Disney game, it looked a lot of fun, like, a lot of fun. The characters looked really interesting and cool. And this whole concept of, like, this Keyblade, that looked awesome. Um, I didn't play Kingdom Hearts until I was, like, much older, though. Uh, but it, it really did, like, change my whole, like, perspective on, like, things like i don't know it just something about it it was really special to me yeah i can agree there was there's been a lot of stuff for me really um but kingdom hearts then so i gotta get oh, yeah. to that i know the keyblade's a big thing from that game yeah kingdom hearts that's another game that i might take over zelda um there's very few of them that i would but kingdom hearts i just adore the series my oc is kind of based on it but she was. She used to be. She has her own thing going on now. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I have characters. I had, like, just, just something about the whole concept of, like, going to different worlds and seeing these different Disney characters and, like, doing all this different stuff. It just, like, was really, like, cool and fun. And I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It was magic. It just pops. It like, like, it's kind of a personal experience. Yeah. That's why I asked this question, because I, I might yeah. not feel it, but you feel it for sure. Oh, yeah. It's like, it's matters. like, you go, I don't know if you've, like, been to the parks, but it's like when you go to the parks, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a similar experience where you feel excited about it, and you're just like, you want to meet everybody and everything, and do everything. That, that's kind of how I feel when I play Kingdom Hearts, too. I, like, really love, I just really love Disney in general, and, like, I don't know, something about Kingdom Hearts just really clicked with me. I've been to Disney World twice. Um, one time, I think like 10 years ago, one time like five or six uh, with my family. But I, I know the feeling though, I especially would say like, uh, I don't know if Disneyland per se has it over there, but I know uh, Epcot was one of my favorite areas to go to. Yeah, we don't really have an Epcot over here. Um, <laughs> we just have Downtown Disney, DCA, and then Disneyland. Okay. Those are our only parks. <laughs> but I know the feeling, though. I, I definitely yeah. liked, um, I think it's Space Mountain was that roller coaster oh, yeah. liked quite a bit. I didn't even realize somebody died on that, like, 20 years but ago. Mr. Van Mr. One Way, yeah, no, there's there's a whole... I could get into some Disney uh, creepy stories because I know a lot working in the parks, you know? Oh, yeah, I, I forgot. Work you worked for a little bit. <laughs> for there. Yeah, I did. Um... Yeah, no, I know a lot, especially, like, I worked at night, and, like, I had to close stuff sometimes. So people would, like, we, we'd be talking, and, like, sometimes that would be a thing that would come up. And it was really weird. <laughs> but, like, sometimes they tell me, like, these the stories, and I'm like, okay, man, okay. <laughs> oh, jeez. Like, one of those things, and I'm like, okay, man, okay. <laughs> I wouldn't want to work. I hate closing at night, but I wouldn't want to work in a, a very large environment like that. <laughs> Honestly, the parks are so beautiful at night. Like, when there's no one there and it's all lit up, it's just really, like, I keep saying magical, but magical. It, that really is the word, though, for Disney, magical. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I personally wouldn't recommend working there, like, yourself unless you, like, ha want to devote, like, all your time and that's all you can, like, all you're going to do. Because it's really time-consuming to work there. It really is. Um, like, nothing against Disney, but, like, I got worked quite a lot, and I live pretty far from the park still, considering. Um, Anaheim's, like, an hour away. 
Oh, and what, that's what you had to drive an hour there? Basically, yeah. Oh, wow. But, um, but like, yeah. Ah! It's, it's pretty far. I can't um, imagine but... driving that far for yeah. a job. Yeah, it, it's pretty dang far. It was worth it to me at the time because, like, I just really loved it and it was magical and, like, every, like, every day it was, like, you would go and you could just, like, completely make someone's day. It would just be, like, the most wonderful feeling. Like, just make someone happy, you know? Yeah. I would definitely say it's more like a dream job. Like, did, was that kind of, like, what it was for you? You felt like it was, like, a pretty big job you wanted to have eventually? It. Yeah, I miss it a lot, but I don't know if I would go back, especially like considering I'm working on my own stuff right now. So it's right. like I don't wanna, I don't wanna like step in on Disney and be like, oh, I'm making this thing, and then they'll be like, oh, hey, you can't be making something while you're working here, because that is famously in their bylaws. Like you cannot like create while you're there, or oh, they wow. technically own it. Really? <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of a really dumb bylaw, but. It's 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 literally in the contracts like for everybody. Everybody basically knows this at this point. It's not like I'm revealing Disney secrets. I can get in trouble for that still. I'm still within my um non disclosure agreement of leaving the company, technically. Oh really? Yeah, there's like a certain time period. I believe it's only like I believe it's like I don't remember how long it is, but I'm technically still within that, so I'm There's sure you do know secrets and stuff you're not allowed to tell people, though. Yes, there, there are quite a few that I know. <laughs> it's like Nintendo, like how Reggie knew a bunch of other stuff, and to this day he's still supposed to keep it because, like, he can get in trouble of yeah. you know, suit and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nothing the legal it's like, issues. Yeah, it's because like you don't you you want to like they want to keep the magic and they don't want people to know certain things. It's understandable, you know. Yeah, I I, I know that whole feeling about keeping a secret from something like that. I have. Every human, I'm sure, keeps secrets for, like, if, if you break it one or another, I'm sure somebody can take it out of context and then start a big problem over it, or it's something they don't want other people to know. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, once again, we went off topic, and that's kind of yeah, my fault. Yeah, we're talking Disney. It's okay, though. <laughs> that was fun to... That was what I wanted, really, I wanted out of these interviews, is just, like, going to different topics more than just, like... I feel like this is one of my shortest questionnaires I have sent for anybody. Like, generally I like to stick with video game stuff, but I know because you're a voice actor, but I didn't, I didn't know, like, I knew you worked for Disney and amusement parks and stuff like that, but I didn't know it was, like, this in-depth, to be honest. Yeah, well, like, all I basically did was, like, I was one of the people who sold ice creams on the carts and stuff. So, like, I didn't do anything, like, I wasn't friends with characters or anything like that, you know? Well, like, I had friends of characters, but I wasn't friends with characters. That's, that's term <laughs> i yeah <laughs> i have to explain that <laughs> it's right but how was the ice cream job though um it was pretty all right the people there were cool for the most part um you know no jobs without its issues and you know drama but <laughs> yeah i can definitely um, get into my own issues but let's hear about yeah. it <laughs> um i i i would have some stories you know but Again, not gonna like diss Disney because it gave me the opportunity. They were pretty cool. It's more so the customer than Disney's fault. I would you could say sometimes as much as the customer's yeah, always, right, always right. But... I've actually met celebrities too. It was um, no oh, one's wow. super big. Um, well, actually, that's a lie. <laughs> um, I'm gonna tell you a funny story. Let's hear I it. was on this really uh, back when uh, before Pixar Pier when it was Paradise Pier still. Mm -hmm. It was on this really busy ice cream cart that we have right in front of California Screamin'. You know the roller coaster? Yeah. Okay, so it was right in front of that ride, and it's like one of the busiest carts in the summertime. I was sitting there on this cart, I had a super long line. My uh, stalker, who is like the person who brings me like the ice creams and the supplies I need, um, I also got trained to do that later, but that's, that's not important. <laughs> um, <laughs> was there helping me out because I was a little overwhelmed because I was still kind of new at the time and I was just you know trying to focus on the transactions he told me focus on the transactions I'll get the ice cream for people don't worry about it 
I was like, okay, thank you, because that, that helped a lot. It was a long line, and I was scared. I know the feeling. Um, so we're going through this line, and apparently, at some point, didn't even realize it, I um, had uh, used uh, Adam Sandler's credit card. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Didn't even notice. Didn't even notice. I walked backstage on my break after, and my stalker goes, Do you know whose card you just rung up? And I go, No. And he goes, That was Adam Sandler. I was like, what? Wow. <laughs> you didn't even, you were just so focused on the job. I mean, you listened to your stalker, your stalker though. Ah, yeah, my, I was like just tongue. focusing on it, and like I didn't even realize it. And he's like, He laughed at me. I was like, Why are you laughing at me? That's not funny. <laughs> Did he notice th that he was there? Did he notice Adam Sandler was there? Yeah, he was talking to him. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was like, bruh. <laughs> he didn't even notice. Did you hate yourself uh, for that? <laughs> I was so mad. There was another time on that cart, too, where I missed another celebrity. Um, I was just chilling on that cart. And I was ringing up people. And I hear this guy yell. It was, like, right before they were closing um, the uh, pier for refurbishment. And I hear this guy yell, yeah, screaming, you know, all excited. And I go, hey, that voice sounds really familiar. <laughs> I come to find out that it was Brendan Urie of Panic at the Disco. Oh, wow. And you... I just about died because my sister and I are huge fans of Panic at the Disco. We've been to concert, you know, we've been to like... We just really love Brendan. We and like the whole Panic of the Disco, like old music, new music. We 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 love Brendan. Um, but it was just like it was like I was so upset. I was so mad, and she literally hasn't like every time I bring it up or like somebody brings up Brendan at Disney, she gives me like this glare, like you could have met Brendan. And I was like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's that sounds like fun, man. California, I know, is full of different opportunities, but especially like working at Disney, that's that sounds like a fun experience. It really is. Um, but like I said, I don't recommend it unless you like literally are going to move to Anaheim and devote your time to it because it's kind of a lot. <laughs> it certainly sounds like it. Oh yeah. But definitely the mood for being overwhelmed on a job and then you need to have like some guy that doesn't even work on your job help you. It was like, it was like, it was like, ah, well, everybody who's trained for stalker was also trained for, um, for uh, selling at 1.2. So it was like, everybody, everybody in the department knows how to do stuff, but like, for the most part, they won't unless like they need to, you know, kind of thing. Right. Yeah. It's for backup. It, it, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It, it, there was like one other encounter, but like he wasn't like a big celebrity that I met. Um, he was. Um, I don't know if you ever heard of the Disney Channel show Lab Rats. Yeah, I did. Okay, well that one, that one wasn't interesting because I actually got to talk to him. Oh, that's <laughs> kind cool. Of. Um, so it was the guy who plays the dad. No, I, I don't know if you know like the dad. Um, I, I don't know name. their names, uh, the actors, but I, I know I've seen some of the show. I think the dad's name is Davenport. I think that's his last name. Okay, that sounds familiar. Um, but he came up to my cart, and I remember it very clearly because I remember what he ordered and everything. And I was like, okay, you know, I just he, he ordered a um one of the lemon pre cups, which is like frozen lemonade, basically. Ooh. <laughs> um, they're so good, honestly recommend them but um I ordered a lemon pre-cup and i um i was like okay that'll be and i told him the price i think it was like 475 something something like that um but i tell it but i look up and um i go reach in to grab it i look up and i look at the customer because you know i'm just like kind of vibing not chill not caring because it was like right the cart that was right outside of it used to be bugs land that yeah. was like a super chill cart um, but, so I pick it up, I set it on the counter, and I look up at him. I just go, like, you know, I got, like, this shocked expression on my face, and he got <laughs> this big old smile, because I knew who he was. 
<laughs> oh, I love that experience. I was like, what? And so he paid, and I said, have a great day. And he goes, you too. And I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> oh. He was in shock. That's amazing. <laughs> I've had friends, though, who have told me they've... um. I had a friend who almost got hit by Kim Kardashian's car. Oh, wow. Um, I've had friends who have actually talked to um, different, like, celebrities. There's just, like, a lot of, like, stories that I could go into, but I don't want to, like, turn this into the, the Icy Worked at Disney show. <laughs> it's alright. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of, like, experiences that um, I remember, and, like, I had friends, like, at one point, we had, like, this whole Disney channel, like, event going on, and, like, a lot of the Disney channel stars were there in the park, so a lot of my friends ended up meeting them, and I didn't because I was, like, it was the relief at that point, which is the person who, like, goes when someone else is on, for someone else's break. Yeah. Like, it was, like, I kept, I kept just missing them. And, like, there was another time Chris Pratt was in the park, one of my friends ran into him, and I was, like, so upset. <laughs> uh, Megan Fox. Um, just a bunch of different celebrities. And it, it's something that, like, happens at Disney all the time. Like, you just run into celebrities. Um, but, like, on a normal day, it's, like, mostly chill. But then, as soon as somebody finds out there's a celebrity in the park, there's, like, Chaos. this whole buzz. Backstage, like, oh, did you hear this person's in the park? <laughs> <laughs> it's so, it's so funny. Is there paparazzis? Well, not really. For the most part, people tend to, like, be really chill and not bother them when they're in the park. Because they know that they're just there to be with, like, their family and friends. Right. Um, it's, it's kind of this weird experience where, like, you don't, you don't, like, bother them, but, like, you know they're there, you know? Yeah, it's, you know, they just, you just let them exist alongside you as a normal human being. Yeah, basically, um, there's, like, I've met a couple other celebrities in my lifetime that were, like, but that was, like, at a different park, like, a different, like, place entirely, um, universal when I was there with my family, but, like, for the most part, like, even there, people were, like, really chill, you know, they didn't really care, like, they cared, is like people would stop them for pictures sometimes, but um, for the most part, people were just like really chill, just let them do what they wanted. You know, they didn't really care. It's not really like a like it is a huge thing, but it's not a huge thing. You know? Yeah. Well, uh, I yeah. would definitely say we got our fixing for Disney. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think we got a lot of uh, interesting stuff. I liked on. it though. I, I didn't expect this. Well, yeah, um, what was I gonna say now? I forgot. I also should have thought that fast. <laughs> you were saying about Universal and, like, it's just kind of normal and chill? Yeah, yeah, it was really chill. I actually ran into Snoop Dogg a few times. Oh, really? Yeah, he, yeah, he was, he, I had an annual pass at the time. And so did he, I guess? Or, like, maybe he just went all the time, you know? I don't know. Maybe he had like a thing with Universal. Probably. I don't know. I don't really listen to Snoop's music or anything. <laughs> I don't so, either. Like, I don't know much about him. You know, outside of memes. <laughs> I just know they're a celebrity. Yeah, the memes and yeah. maybe some of my friends or family like, you know, those people. Yeah. Like, um, I waved at him one time because I had like seen him a few times already. He waved back. Oh, wow. I was like... <laughs> That would have been a pretty cool moment. <laughs> it was a very cool moment. I was like super excited. Um, I've also met um, Jason Earls at Universal. I don't know if you know who that is. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, no. I don't. I, you have to um, like tell me something they do, and then I might remember. Do you know the show Hannah Montana? Oh, okay. Yeah, brother. yeah. Okay, I do now. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, that's the most famous one I can think of. Um, at the moment, anyway. Yeah, I met him. I have a picture with him. Um, he was pretty chill. It's really nice, honestly. Um, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah it, it, honestly, I don't know how I got, like, just ended up at the right place at the right time, I guess. 
was like right when Transformers had first opened up and like I was there for Transformers. And so was he apparently. Oh. Um, Cause that's where he was going. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was it was interesting. I've had a few encounters. That had to have been like one of the best jobs, but like you're you're no longer really into the amusement scene now though. Yeah, well like I didn't work at Universal, it was just like I had an annual pass kind of thing. Um but Disney, yeah. Um I'm not really like there anymore. I wanna like go back to visit because I just I miss it so much. I, I hear they're reopening soon, but I'm not gonna go for a while. Just wanna, you know Personally I wouldn't. Safe. Yeah, I wanna be safe. When I go back, you know, it'll probably be, it probably won't be, like, probably till, like, the fall, maybe. Maybe a little bit before then, but I don't know. I, I, I was saying, I'd rather just wait a year before I really go anywhere major, but for me, anyways, what? amusement scene, like, Cedar Point's a thing where I am, and it's, my parents love going there all the time. I would wait, too, but my friend gave me a ticket that expires at the end of the year, so I gotta go. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. See, what they're doing for our area, though, if you have any um, tickets or passes or something like that, they said they'd roll over to next year if they keep their word, that is. I don't um, know. I haven't heard anything from Disney about that because it kind of, like, what happened was I was supposed to go this summer because my sister graduated and we were supposed to go together to have a fun time. Um, things happened. Things change. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, the real world issue happens that... <laughs> Yes, exactly. I, real world issues in general. And when yeah. don't those happen? Exactly. Are they personal or uh, globally in this case? Yes. A very interesting time. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely something to put in the books. I mean, I can't say... I think, like, the biggest event for me was, like... I'm not going to bring it up. Like, probably when I was, like, don't even remember, really. Or I had a very vivid memory, but that's about all there is. Like, you know, 20 years living for me. Then something happens, you know. It's... Kind of should have been expected on my end. It's like, it's like it's like this is something that's going to definitely be in history books. Definitely, right. we'll go down there with like different like eggs and stuff. <laughs> now remember it as me staying inside trying to finally be Persona Five Royal. No. Moon. <laughs> <laughs> need to play that game. I haven't played Persona personally. Um. I don't know if I ever will, like, personally. To but... be fair, I wouldn't get into it unless you have a lot of free time on your hands and you're willing to devote your time a ton to that game. Like, I, I got Persona 4 and 3. Now I'm hearing rumors about uh, this probably won't go out until... I'm sure this video will come out after um, when this is revealed, but there's rumors that Persona 4 Golden's coming to Steam, and that's a big deal because Persona has never been on anything but PlayStation, except for a few spinoff games in 3DS, which really don't people don't count them. Yeah, I think I heard you, like, I think I saw you, like, tweet about it um, earlier or something. Or maybe that was one of my friends. It probably I know, I know was me. Um, I don't really remember half the stuff I tweet, and I sometimes I end up deleting <laughs> things that I regret tweeting. I feel that. Uh, but yeah, I probably did tweet about it, that it's apparently supposed to be revealed June 13th at the PC game show or something that i don't i don't keep any all i know is e3 and nintendo directs that's all i really know and i know there's a thing called i don't even remember the name it's in germany some like game mm. uh, games con con that's it i wish that e3 got had a chance to happen this year but it, it's not here but i kind of wish that they, they would still have gone like through with the schedule and done like an online e3 yeah. but it's also understandable that they don't because like it's a lot of work to put together those like things nintendo directs and all it's that definitely stuff. a last minute thing i mean they could have pushed it back to like july or something because like nintendo's doing shadow drops now yeah i i kind of saw them posting on their um youtube a little bit um i was looking at it um in my notifications because i have my notifications on for nintendo right um, so i saw them posting a couple things but nothing like super major yet but i saw at least paper mario the origami king <laughs> Well, other than Paper Mario. <laughs> I'm I, uh, if they posted something today, I would know. Um, yeah. Was there anything new today at all? I don't mind if you reveal it to me. Yeah, I, I, it's like, it's like, give me that Nintendo content, please. Or at least right. tell me who from ARMS is going to be in Smash. <laughs> oh, man. I'm, I would want Twintel. I don't know who I'd want, because I haven't played very much ARMS. I only played, like, the, um... 
the demo that they put out a couple months back. I only Modified. played ARMS like, I got a launch switch and I played the, there was like a demo as well. They had like the first year I think it came out and I played a little bit. It was a good game, but something I weren't, I'm not going to invest $60 into. I know it's dropped price a little bit, but I don't think yeah. I'd want to invest into it. It seems more of a competitive game, kind of like Splatoon, except Splatoon does have a single player. I don't know if, I don't think ARMS does. Uh, it does, it does. Um, okay. Ben pl actually played through the entire thing oh, wow. during the, uh, what you call it, the uh, demo. Really? I was so shocked, because like, they made it free for like, what, a week or something, or two days? Something weird. Oh yeah, I <laughs> forgot, they made like, did they make the entire game pretty much free? Yeah, it was basically just like, all free, and like, he played through the entire story. I think that's when I had I bad like... internet still. And I was like, I was gonna get it, but it's probably gonna take 10 hours or plus to download. <laughs> Oh yeah, I feel that. Now my internet's being like super spotty, but for some reason during the day it seems fine. I don't know. It's it's weird. It kind of depends. Like I, I, I right now I'm recording at a location my family owns. Like this isn't where I live. Yeah. I just kind of went here because like better internet. I think that's how I streamed as well. I'm using cable internet better than uh you know satellite my parents get. But yeah, yeah. Or this is just like I don't know what's the deal. Mm, we, it's just been spotty for like a week and we think there's an issue like with the company itself and not us because apparently we're not the only ones having this issue so they like to blame a lot of internet providers not to get on this topic but they like to blame the customer and i've had yeah. a few times where i had to personally take the phone from my parents and say it's you guys not us because we've spent hundreds of dollars on br brand new equipment and there's no issues i might not have a degree in internet but I'm pr when I say it's bandwidth, as soon as I bring that word up, they go, Oh, you're saying it's us? We're the problem? I'm like, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You're the problem, not me. And we pay all the money and, I don't know, then there was like the whole spiel about not to get down net neutrality, where they can like limit down your speeds and stuff. Like, it's just a whole slew of, I think internet providers are some of the worst problems in this world. <laughs> not to get on that it's, spiel. I don't know what their deal is. I just got money. lucky in my area somehow. Even though, like, my area is pretty much the country, um, it has surprisingly decent speeds to compare to what people in my town get. Yeah, I always is like they keep blaming it on, like, oh, we're at the end of, like, the area where they provide service, so it's our fault. That's another thing, too, is, like, the area, um, like, my parents, they live, like, just off the block of where you can get it like, oh, we don't provide that. We'd have to spend a good thousands of dollars just to run a cable, you know, a few feet down the road. And like, even though yeah. you're just like right on the edge, we're not gonna provide it. It's like, uh... It's stupid. And then we have to resort to satellite, which is like the max speed is eight megabytes. And that's what they claim we're supposed to get, but it's not even like, that's what you're supposed to get, but it's not stable. Just like you're saying spotty. Yeah, uh, it's, it's all, the whole thing's a pain. <laughs> Oh man, I the internet it, it sucks especially when you're streaming and then uploading videos which actually I I'm I'm uploading one right now somehow oh. I got lucky like I couldn't do this if I was at home doing this trying to call you know interview with you I couldn't if uploading a video just bogs down my entire system at home like and you can't yeah. you can't even do anything it's gotten worse yeah that's that's kind of how ours is it's gotten a lot worse and it's like uh why <laughs> Right, like, exactly. You can't tell them, and then they're like, "Oh no, it's 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 you. There's something wrong with your stuff." I. Your it's end. supposed to be like the customer is always right for, but like that was like a common term you'd always hear. But yeah. um, in this case, like the internet providers, they blame you when it's really you know it's them. Yeah. 